circle. Finding the equation of a circle. Example 1. Using diameter points. Given that the points 5, 7 and minus 1, minus 1 are endpoints of the diameter of a circle, find its equation. So you're given information that minus 1, minus 1 and 5, 7 represent the diameter or a diameter of a circle. So we can see it here that if they do, they're both on the circle, on the perimeter, and they are furthest apart. Now if we were to find the halfway point, we might find the centre, because we would have two radii there, a radius here from the centre out and another one here. So let's now start by finding the midpoint of that line segment. Using the formula for the midpoint to identify the centre, the midpoint is given in the tables as x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2. And the two values are x1, y1 is 5, 7, x2, y2, minus 1, minus 1. So we just substitute the values into the equation. So for x1 plus x2, we take 5 plus minus 1, 5 plus minus 1 over 2. And for y1 and y2, we take 7 and minus 1, 7 plus minus 1 over 2. So 5 plus minus 1 over 2 is 4 over 2. 7 plus minus 1 over 2 is 6 over 2. 4 over 2 is 2. 6 over 2 is 3. We find that the midpoint of the two points in question at the diameter is at 2, 3. So here we could see it visually that 2, 3 now becomes the centre of this circle. Given that the points 5, 7 and minus 1, minus 1 are endpoints of the diameter of the circle, they're on the circle. So we should be able to get the radius then from the distance between the centre and one of the points. The midpoint of the diameter is also the centre of the circle. So we have a centre at 2, 3, or from a formula point of view, hk is at 2, 3. The centre of the generic, or the general formula there, our specific centre is at 2, 3. The radius of the circle is equal to the distance from the centre, or the midpoint, to a point on the circle. So really the distance from 2, 3 to either 5, 7, or to minus 1, minus 1. We'll take the distance from 2, 3 to 5, 7. So finding the length of the radius using the formula for the length of a line segment, we get that the radius is given by x1 minus x2 squared plus y1 minus y2 squared, all square rooted. This formula is given in the line section of your tables on the distance or the length of a line segment. The two points are 2, 3 now, 2, 3 being the midpoint, and 5, 7, a point on the circle. So substituting the values in, we get 2 minus 5 for x1 minus x2 squared, and 3 and 7, 3 minus 7 squared for the other. So 3 is the distance here, 3 squared, 4 is the difference here, 4 squared, 3 squared plus 4 squared, 9 plus 16, 25 equals 5. So our radius length is now 5. <clears throat> so we now have hk of 2, 3, or is 5. We have all the information we need to define the specific circle. So using the formula, the general formula of x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is r squared, we simply just have to plug in these values. So we're going to substitute h with 2, k with 3, and r with 5. So the equation of the circle is x minus 2 squared plus y minus 3 squared is 5 squared. So we've identified the circle from its two or two points that represented the diameter. Example 2. The points minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 7 and 5, minus 1 lie on the same circle and also form a right angled triangle. And you're asked to find the equation of the circle. So, if it were visualised, we would see it like this. 
a point minus 1 minus 1, minus 1 7, and 5 minus 1, and a right angle here. You're told it's a right angle. Now, in your theorems, you're told that if three points all lie on the same perimeter of the same circle, and if there's a right angle in the triangle they form, then two of the points represent a diameter. The hypotenuse, the longest side, the one opposite the 90 degree, is the diameter. So the theorem states if the points form a right angle triangle, the hypotenuse of the triangle is a diameter of the circle. So that's a theorem. We don't have to prove it in this question. We just assume it. So using the formula for the length of a line segment, we get the distance is x1 minus x2 bar, or x1 minus x2 squared, I should say, and y1 minus y2 squared, all square rooted. So we're going to look at the pairs of points in turn, from minus 1, minus 1 to minus 1, 7. We just write them down here, because we'll be referencing them. The point minus 1, minus 1, and minus 1, 7. And taking the distance between them, we get minus 1, and the minus 1 for the x, and square that, and the minus 1 and the 7 here. So the distance here is 0, the distance here is 8, 0 squared and minus 8 squared, 64, or a total distance of 8. And that's not surprising because the x values, minus 1, were minus 1 in both cases, and the y was from minus 1 to 7. So the distance between minus 1 and 7 is a total of 8. 1 to 0 and a further 7. We now take the second pair of data, minus 1, minus 1 to 5, minus 1. And again we can see that the y values here are the same, so it looks like the answer is going to be 6, a change in the x value. But we can use the formula, x1, y1 is minus 1, minus 1, and x2, y2 is 5, minus 1. So substituting the values we get minus 1, minus 5 for the x, and then square it, and minus 1, minus, minus 1 for the y. Minus 6 squared plus 0 squared, or the square root of 36, is 6. So those two points are 6 units apart. And the last pairing is the minus 1, 7 to 5, minus 1, these two here. And they don't share a common x value or a common y value. So we'll use the formula. We, sub we write down the answers here for their use later. And we substitute them. So for the x differences, we'd say minus 1 and 5. So minus 1, minus 5, all squared there. And for the y's, we'd say 7 minus minus 1, 7 minus minus 1 squared. So minus 1 and minus 5 gives us minus 6, that's squared. 7 minus minus makes that a plus, so that becomes 7 plus 1 is 8. So we get 36 plus 64, add it together, 100, the square root of 100 is 10. So the length here of 10 from these two points represents the longest that we've got. So because it's the longest length, that must represent the hypotenuse. So, the note. The diameter represents the longest side of the right angle triangle. Therefore, we can establish the center of the circle and the radius as before from the diameter endpoints minus 1, 7 and 5, minus 1. So those two points were the furthest away. Those two points had a difference of 10 between them. Those two points must be the diameter must be diameter points, so therefore we can solve it exactly the same as we did in example 1. Example 3, rectangle points. The four points minus 1, minus 1, minus 1, 7, 5, minus 1, and 5, 7 lie on the same circle and also form a rectangle. Find the equation of the circle. Well here you're given four points but you're also told that they form a rectangle. If they form a rectangle, this angle here must be a right angle, so must this, so must this, and so must this. So you have four right-angled angles there. Lines connecting the opposite corners of the rectangle represent diameters. That, for example, the line from 5 minus 1 to 1, 7, and the line from minus 1 minus 1 to 5, 7, both represent diameters of the circle. 
So for example, if we join this point here to this point here, that is a diameter. Why? Because the three points, one, two, three, are on the circle. This one here is a right angle. So because it's a right angle and there are three points on the same triangle, this must be the diameter from the theorem. Similarly, we could take one, two, three, these points. This would be a right angle and the same diameter again here. We could also have chosen the opposite diagonal from minus 1, 7 to 5, minus 1. Because once again, there's a right angle here and a right angle here. And the three points are connected with the right angle. Therefore, this must be the diameter. So lines connecting the opposite corners of the rectangle that represent the diameters. So whether it's 5 minus 1 to 1, 7 or the opposite diagonal, both represent diameters. Therefore, we can establish the centre and the radius of the circle as before.